so happy to have a special guest on the Peace Project, someone who I just learned so much from and respect so much, Joseph Rizendo. It's so good to see you. We've got it all straight now. You've gotten 50 tally awards, six Emmy num six actual Emmys that you won, and I think 19 Emmy nominations. And yeah, we have we have quite a bit of nominations, 19 Emmy nominations. So we've won 33 point three percent of the time or something so it's good it's always better to win than be nominated but it's nice to be nominated too absolutely and um we love travel scopes we air it on uh, in maui here and now we're so happy to uh, have your radio show on the air and you're doing the podcast and the new book musings is just out um so you're staying busy and yes it's a beautiful there it book. is I'm gonna this get is it. a uh, proof version, so it has a nice little strip across it. But it, nice. it's it'll look it'll look something like this. Something. It's a lot yep. of work in the book. It's a lot of work, and I think that I'm a type A. I love to do a lot, and I know you do so much. There's no stopping you. You're a very very um, inspired person. And for the peace projects, I thought I'd ask you a couple of questions about peace. Sure. Uh, in your travels, and you've traveled so many wondrous places all around the world places some places i'd never even heard of really um in taiwan islands i'd never even knew existed and so many lovely spots and i was going to ask you in all your travels what are some of the spots you found that really that you just had a sense of peace about now i know there's a lot of people say these are power spots some people like to go to power spots and i'm not sure if power spots and peace correlate but have you particularly found some spots where you just went to this place and there was this sense of peace that enveloped you? Well, certainly on our travels to uh, Bhutan and in Thailand, uh, countries that kind of um, specialize in spiritual experiences and being enlightened and, and being in touch. And that's kind of what they promote about their culture. Uh, you know, a lot of Buddhism, uh, Buddhist countries that we have gone to that seems to be prevalent there. So uh, there is a sense of peace there. Um, but, the, you know, the peace comes from uh, finding a mutual uh, agreement with people and coming together and having uh, a place where you can have um, agreement and you can have a relationship. And I think that I found that in Bhutan, although the language was a problem and the language was an obstacle also in Thailand, um, that people don't need language to be able to express themselves. For instance, in Thailand, they, they why you when you walk into a shop um, and it's very dramatic when you come home to the United States and you can spend I don't know, 10 minutes with or five minutes at, at, a, at a checkout counter and have a person ever look up and look at you and just look at the goods that are going or look at the cash register or whatever. But whenever you walk into a shop or anything, and any any face to face with a human being in Thailand, they will why you first. It's the uh, equivalent of bonjour or good day. Uh, and you know, it's a, it's 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 a, these these two particularly um, Thailand and Bhutan. I would say I found that those cultures lended themselves to to finding a place where they could connect with you, and when you do that, then peace prevails. Um, only when you're having unexpected uh, expect when you're having unexpected or uh, unreasonable expectations of people, or, or when you travel in fear and doubt and worry, do you become separated uh, from other people? And, you know, uh, as Travelscope uh, on our website, travelscope.net, our magazine, and our podcasts, and our uh, all the other things we do, our blogs, and of course, um, the, the, the television show, uh, Joseph Rosendo's Travelscope on PBS, we always try to uh, promote uh, finding a mutual uh, bond with the people you connect and because that's really kind of the best way to travel and, and you get the most out of your travel experience you get your more 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 buck more bang for your buck if you will as far as a traveler is concerned because it's all about experiences and experiences are always with people 
uh, yeah, you can have great nature experiences or great wildlife experiences, but ultimately it comes down to people. So, so those two cultures, uh, but I've had it everywhere. I've had it, you know, traveling in the United States. I've had it traveling in Europe, definitely, and in Africa. Um, you know, whenever you can whenever you can be someplace and establish that connection, peace prevails, and it has to come from you. Um, you have to be the one who is is making the the move. Uh, certainly, it's great if it's reciprocated, but you need to be the initiator. And if you are, uh, often you'll have that moment of peace. Well, Buddha said, "Peace comes from within. Do not seek it without." And of course, that is so important everywhere. And and it's so interesting when you travel, if you can go to that place of peace, even if it just takes a few moments, a certain amount of breathing, um, whatever it takes, everyone has different ways to make that inner connection. I love that you called this a why. I always called it gashao bao, but I never heard the term why. What is, I've never heard that. In before. Thailand, that's what they call it. They call it a why. I didn't know and, that. Uh, so that's what they call it in Thailand. Uh, okay. It, Okay, because that's the only yeah, place yeah. where I've seen it, you know, where it is a greeting. It is good day. It's, you know, namaste. It's whatever day when namaste is Indian. But, yeah. you know, um, that is, it's called the, 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 the gesture is called a why. And they why you. Uh, it's a <laughs> verb. And, uh, you know, they, and it happens everywhere on the street, uh, waiters, uh, restaurant, shopkeepers, whatever, you know, it's just like when you walk into a, a shop in France, and if you don't say bonjour, um, you know, people are offended because, you know, we're, they're not as brusque and uh, don't take things for granted uh, like we tend to do in the United States because we have different priorities. Uh, their priority is to live their life. And so they have to be living their life best as far as they're concerned. And so they take that moment to say bonjour. And I've even had restaurateurs where I've walked in and, you know, in an American way, can we sit over here? Is it all right to sit down? You know, even if I'm speaking French and, and they've stopped and said, how about first bonjour? Really? And, and they've even said that to me and the French will, you know, like, you know, the French will, will try to put you in your place, if you will, uh, without any problem as far as they're concerned. They're not shy about that. Uh, and, you know, they, and, and that's, that's one of some people don't like that. I, I if it's deserved, I think it's correct. And uh, and we learn from it because we have to the reason you travel is to change your perspective. And to get walk into walk in somebody else's shoes, if you will, for a mile or two or ten, and um, and that's how you grow, and that's how you uh, have the best kind of experiences you can when you're traveling. I was told that in um, at least in Buddhism, the spirit in me sees the spirit in you, right? And, and even saying bonjour, it's setting the stage for communication and connection, and that connection can be a beautiful thing, and as you say, it can change. It can be for you and in your shows on Travelscope that I've seen, you are able to really make that connection in a way where your presence is, I think you make them comfortable by just seeing them for who they are. You set the stage for allowing them to be comfortable by joining them, not trying to have them do what you want to do, but you join them in what they're doing. And that's a wonderful give and take that I think we can learn from. We shouldn't expect when we go somewhere, people to act the way we want them, but join them in their circumstance because we're traveling them. Exactly, we're in their culture and we should try to fit in uh, as best as we can, as much as the language barrier might allow. Uh, one of the reasons you wanna do the minimum, know how to say hello, thank you, please, pardon me, that the, whatever country you go to, and we try to do that, uh, is because you you need to put you need to back off your ego needs to come down uh, you know ugly you know the stereotypical typical ugly American is the guy who goes to a, a French restaurant because once again you hear about it in France other places you don't I mean for instance in Mexico 
uh, the Mexican people are extremely kind. And I've seen uh, my fellow Americans in uh, Mexico acting like uh, complete idiots and fools and being rude and obnoxious and having the Mexican people uh, let them go and let them be. Uh, but we need, you need to back off of that but I've seen them, you know, expect people to speak their language, uh, get upset when they don't. I've even heard people say, oh, they speak English. They're just pretending like they don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, th that, that kind of arrogance is uh, what doesn't serve you well when you're trying to travel or when you're trying to uh, create peace in the moment. That's, they'll do the exact opposite. Uh, you know, you want to find a place to meet people, a common ground to meet people on. And often that means you need to make a greater effort. Certainly you need to make a greater effort than the people whose country you're in. Uh, you know, why should they cater to you? Because they can make a buck off of you. Okay, if you want to say that, you could. That, that's a good business plan, maybe. It's not a very good human plan. But, um, you know, why should they cater to you? Well, you're I, in another country. You need to learn about their customs. You need to learn their language. You need to learn what their do's and don'ts are. I, I did a whole, you know, when I used to do a radio show, and I did a radio show exclusively for over 23 years, and I did a lot of uh, electronic um, you know, audio documentaries and stipend for Discovery Radio and for uh, AP, and, and, and I actually did one a series of, of podcasts, if you will, or um, whatever you want to call it, uh, clips uh, on business travel. And it was all about teaching people how to be, what, how to not make incredible mistakes and cultural faux pas that'll, you know, queer the deal for you. Uh, so, uh, so, but all it is- I love is, to hear those. That's a great thing, because I was just actually going to say, if you want to do a business deal in China or Japan or some other country, if you don't understand how to communicate, you, you they won't tell you necessarily, but you could totally be aced out because they look at you and go, I don't want to work with this person. As we know, you are a people person and you understand relationships. And even if you have a relationship for just 10 minutes, five minutes in a marketplace, whatever, you that relationship is something you remember you're blessed because not only may you remember it, but you're able to capture it. And you can see right. on TV that light of connection that happens when you like a person and they like you back. Yeah, well, that's, you know, and, that, and, the, and, and the goal of that, and once again, you're talking about creating peace, is to make people feel comfortable. And the way you make people feel comfortable is you uh, fit in with them and you show appreciation of them and their culture and and you're enthusiastic about them and their culture and because you're a guest and you got to remember that that you're a guest and uh and and that's one way of creating a, a moment where something real happens you're tr and and as from an interviewer point of view you know you know this your job is to make your interviewee feel comfortable so that they will share with you who they are because that's where all the excitement lasts so we're fortunate and blessed as you mentioned to have a television show where we're able to go out into the field and do what i'd always done as a traveler and and record it and capture it and some moments are priceless uh, you know, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because you got to find somebody who's receptive and, but the job, but I never look at them and say they weren't very good interview. I always say, well, I, uh, I, I wasn't able to break through or I was, I did, I could have done this better. Or maybe if I had approached them this way, or, you know, I, maybe the mistake I made was this. So, you know, my job is to be the best I can be to make it easier for people. And I guess on a day on a day to day basis, if we're talking about creating peace generally, then I think that's kind of where we're at is to find uh, find a place where we can communicate. And, you know, these days in our country, uh, we are completely, totally at odds with many, many people. Half the country is at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it's been encouraged and driven by elements in our society and in our political world. And that's unfortunate. And it's, it doesn't help us, doesn't serve anybody uh, because 
hey, you know, there's a big country and we're all in it together. And if we don't have each other's help, then we won't accomplish anything, but including prosperity and abundance and, and safety and health and all that other uh, wellness that you have to work together on that. If you are at odds with each other, all, all you get is the worst of people and the worst of life. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what travel has taught me is that you move forward and, you know, and there's a quote we use always on the Travel Scope show, as you know, and I've used it for ever since I started the radio show back in 1985, I've used it to close every show. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. I've always used that part of the quote from Mark Twain's book, Innocence Abroad, about his travels uh, with uh, other Americans abroad. And uh, so I've always used that little piece. There's more to it, which I think is important, particularly now. Uh, Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. Mm -hmm. So what he's promoting is that this is how travel changes you. And that's how we've always run Travel Scope as a radio show and my articles for publications, the books I've done and the television show. Always, always ran it so that the idea that travel changes you, it puts you in a situation where you see other people, you learn who they are, removes fear and a sense of the other, and it puts you, you really can move all that aside and find those connections that all human beings have. And if you live like that and travel like that, you'll have as much peace as you possibly can. It's not, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to not bring your problems and your, you know, your limitations into relationships and your fear and your anger and, and your, you know, your expectations. It's hard to be Buddhist about it. I love, you know, we, we go to a lot of Buddhist countries and the most important parts of the, uh, the steps to, uh, to enlightenment about from Buddha that I think are mindfulness. And, uh, you know, and I think that's, that's one of the most important things to be, be mindful. And there's a number of right action, uh, you know, right effort, uh, you know, right words. You know, the, all that is basically training you to be conscious of, of what, what you're putting out because you are creating your world. And if things aren't going well, it's nobody else is living that world but you. Uh, you know, if, if life is only about your perception, then you're creating that perception. And if people are something to be afraid of, you know, we live at a time where there's so much division and so many people are trying to manipulate us around fear of other people. And if that's the way you live, there can be no peace in your life. You don't get peace looking out of the world and seeing enemies and seeing uh, something to be fearful of. Well, since you brought that up, I'm going to go there because I can't even believe here in Hawaii, in Oahu, ammunition and gun sales are up uh, all around the country in the USA. There's been a run on guns and ammunition. And um, here we are in America and we love America. And yet we've never seen so much division. And we're going to, no matter what happens this coming week, you know how I, I really hope a person has a week and start healing this division. We're going to either way, whatever the outcome of the election, we're going to be needing to really bring some peace and understanding. Um, I think we're going to really have to dig deep into understanding and tread carefully over the next few weeks. And then it's going to be a healing process that's going to be needed unless some people might just leave the country, which I know some people really are talking about. You're talking about maybe even moving to France, but that's the next subject. As we go through this next few, few weeks, what would you recommend for people to do to keep their peace, to keep their calm and to start building bridges rather than and start healing these divisions that we're facing? It's a huge issue. 
Well, we got to find common ground somewhere. I mean, it's difficult because it's there's so much anger and so much threatened, so much fear. Uh, you know, I, I read the other day that uh, either both sides think that if the other side wins, it's the kind of end of the world. So, so everybody's kind of in the same place, thinking that you know the other side in the election is the uh, devil. And uh, really, uh, really, it, the devil is not the other side. The devil is the people who use that power to manipulate and control and gain power. And it's always been like that. You know, the, uh, the dictators, the strong men, the, uh, the Hitlers of the world, uh, they've always found a scapegoat so they could d d gain power from representing what they, as strength. Uh, with a, a kind of strength. And you have to, oh, you have to have somebody overcome in order to have that strength and, and to see the world as something that you have to overcome is very tiring, one, and it's very debilitating and there's no joy and happiness in that. If it's all, if we're at war, uh, physically, mentally, philosophically with everybody. And uh, I, I would just say, try to find a common ground and you know, go start with a basic, common denominator we're human beings on the planet mm -hmm. and that's it come from that place uh, and that often causes a sense of understanding or at least a sense of common humanity gives us a sense of we're connected in some basic way and I think we've done so much so much damage has been done in our country that it's kind of going to have to be reduced down to that you know, feeling bad for people who are dying, who are sick, yes. who are poor. Like doctors, what who doctors are, and nurses do, they don't say, what is your political party when they're going to operate on you or give you help? They look at you as a human being that needs help. Right. Uh, a firefighter. Anyway, they don't stop to look at your divisions. They look at you as a soul in need. And when you're there in those positions, they're able to help. And if we could have that objective view is we all, I wrote my new CD and I'll have to send it to you, it's called All In This Together. And mm. it really was the fact that we, I was hoping because we've all gone through this horrendous year with so many deaths and so many people ill. It's every, say now once every second, someone's getting COVID-19. So with that, you'd think that this would bring us together and understanding and trying to help each other. And I think we need to, and there are so many that are, but then there's even been division created around that. So we have to go back to this, like we're all just human beings. Yeah, you know, this. It's clear when everything is being used as a tool of manipulation and incitement and division for power to, to gain power, then it's clear that what's going on and what the, the solution is to back away from that as far as we can and find a connection. I don't know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, fearful. I am fearful myself of where the country is and where it's going and uh, whether it can get out of this. It's amazing, you know, it shows you how fragile human beings and how fragile peace is and how fragile goodwill is that in just four years, so much change has taken place. So much earth shattering sh change, so much uh, direction uh, of and soul changes in our country. Uh, so much anger, so much destruction, so much hurt, so much death. And in just four years, uh, it's like over 200 years has been set aside in four years. And that is a good lesson to how, how really fragile the connection between human beings. Human beings are pretty fragile. It's lucky, it's amazing that people live to be 90, 100 years old, you know, or in their 70s. It's amazing that, that the human body allow, uh, survives that, particularly because of the bombardment of psychological things that happen. But, you know, it, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, but for in four years to be able to turn the whole country around 
uh, spiritually and philosophically and uh, it's it's dramatic it's amazing it's amazing dramatic uh i i uh, the, the people could say oh it was always there well that obviously it was mm -hmm. if it was so easy for it to come to the surface then it must have always been underneath well, I, I remember, and I try to remember, of course, Mahatma Gandhi's quote on this, you know, uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, whenever I get depressed, whenever I think things are really bad, I always remember that good has always won and good will always win. I'm not, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, I can't remember, but that every time, no matter how bad things get in the world, that we come back and it does finally come, that the good does prevail. And, and we have to remember that, that that is where hope comes from. And I know we have a lot of respect we've got to gain around the world that so many people in America haven't maybe traveled nearly as extensively as me or you. And you, and you think of where you've traveled, you go to these places and you have people come to you and going, what's going on in America? You know, I'm sure they've done that. And I don't want to get too much off the track, but you've got to be an ambassador and explain people in America are good people. You know, it's just sometimes leaders. And we've seen this in China. We've seen this in Russia. People in Russia are good people. People in China are good people. People in any country are good people. It's the leaders. And we have to always remember when we travel to not say, oh, this country is terrible. I won't support China. I won't support Russia. I won't support. It, the people are good people. It's the leaders that are the ones that take away the goodness yeah. of the people. That's been said so many times to me, whether it was in Peru and the, when it was in the middle of crisis in Cuba. Uh, in Africa, uh, it's been said so many times to me that, you know, as people were the same, it's only governments that cause problem. Well, wh why is that? Because, you know, when you have a government like Bhutan, which talks about gross national happiness and has the Department of Gross National Happiness, mm -hmm. which, you know, and there's a million people who are going to be cynical about that. A million people are going to mock that. A million people are going to say, that's not true. What about this? What about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing in God's world is perfect. But uh, maybe in God's world is perfect, but not nothing here in human existence is perfect. And people do the best they can. Uh, but, you know, um, you know when, you, when, you, when you have that kind of sensibility, and, and then and and you would think people would take that as a sign but ego wins out so much and people's self-interest win out so much that it's difficult to create a society where people are really concerned about each other and that's why go back to your original question a place like bhutan and thailand which at least they make a gesture mm -hmm. uh, you know or at least they think and have beliefs that incorporate everybody uh, you know, and, and, and they try and they maybe try to live without outside of hypocrisy, uh, you know, and try to live those lives and try to live that life ain't easy. And yet if the places where I've felt most at peace is where people will make the effort and it's really against their culture to act differently. I mean, you know, try, you know, if you, if you lose it in a Taiwan, a Thailand, excuse me, and you get mad at people, they're shocked. They're shocked by your anger. They're shocked. I mean, you know, I've been in places, service isn't good. And, you know, you start doing one of these things, they're shocked. They're shocked and don't really know what to say. Mm -hmm. They're really completely befuddled on how to deal with someone who's expressing anger or dissatisfaction. They really don't know what to do. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, this is really like, like you have seven heads. You look like you're from outer space. Well, the nice things about those cultures is that when you get out of space and you have you grow your eighth head, they and being in that environment calms you down and brings you back to Earth. And not you know not everything's perfect anywhere. Nobody's saying that. Everybody has problems, but. At least there are places in the world where people have a sense of what is really important. And, and I think I think I think we can get I think we can get back to that. I yeah. think there are people in the country today speaking those words and continually always have, even throughout the last four years. And there's been such a force on the other side saying that's not true, that's political correctness, or that's being namby pammy, or that's not being strong, or that's not being, you know, it's frightening to me when people support that because 
they want to side with what they perceive as power and strength. Mm. That's, that's a false strength. That's a false power. That isn't where power lies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hitler did it. Other people like that. Other dictators are always able to get people to join up with them because they'd rather be on the side of the abuser than the victim. They don't want to be victims and they see themselves as victims. So mm -hmm. it's got to, there's so much going on that it's hard to even, uh, peace becomes, peace, peace begins at home. And, and if you can establish that, and that isn't easy, then you can, um, you can then think about work moving out and spreading the word. Absolutely. So we all, we all do what we can. We certainly on Travel Scope, you know, uh, try to, to call on the better angels of our nature, as Abraham Lincoln said, you know, the better angels of our nature. I love that. I love that too, because he's basically also admitting that there are some devils of our nature too and lesser angels in our nature but we should try to call on the better angels of our nature well that is such a beautiful note to go out on on i i'll add a, a quote that i read um from mother Teresa: peace begins with a smile yes and good. that's a universal language even if you can't speak other languages when you smile from your heart at someone else, when you're traveling, they recognize goodwill. They recognize you as well. So that's something to take with you. And uh, I really appreciate you and the work you do. I find you to be a wonderful teacher. I always feel good when I see your shows. Uh, I recommend right. people go to Travel Scopes and, and look at your shows because they make you feel good. We need to feel good right now. <laughs> we, re we really need to feel good. We've gotten some wonderful response from our viewers along that lines so that, you know, they're really happy that we've allowed them to travel and to experience other cultures while they've been locked down. But yeah, so that's really, really, really has added another layer onto our satisfaction with what we do and our feeling of being uh, blessed and uh, fortunate. And people can sign up for your newsletter as well, which is also very well written. Sure. Yeah, and they can get musings on your site, right? Your new book. Uh, it's going to be there soon. We're still uh, uh, figuring out exactly uh, what it should look like. But uh, this is basically it with a big stripe across this uh, proof <laughs> copy. But um, yeah, uh, it, it, will be, it will be there easy for them to get. And they can go to travelscope.net. And they can sign up to get our podcasts and our blogs and, and be alerted when the newspaper newsletter is out. Uh, excuse me, the magazine is out. It started as a newsletter 20, 30 years ago. But anyway, um, so yeah, certainly travelscope.net would be the way to follow our travels and to join us. And um, this will also be up on P the Peace Projects, thepeaceprojects.com. And I'm going to end with this beautiful connection with what you said is called a why. And I've always thought it was a gashaw. And I honor that beautiful spirit in you that brings peace and goodwill to the world. Joseph Rosendo, thank you. Thank you. And aloha. <laughs> aloha. Namaste. Aloha. Aloha.